You ready to get to work? This is the tarantula enclosure I will be building. It took a few hours to finish. I condensed it down to a nine minute video. So please hold on, as you will see, it moves full tilt boogie. On your mark, set, go. I first cut the back and bottom pieces out of MDF. I use MDF because it doesn't warp. Next, I add adhesive, drill pilot holes, and secure it all together with screws. Next up is the acrylic side pieces. Turning the X-Acto knife upside down allows me to score the uh, acrylic instead of cutting into it. If it sounds like nails on a chalkboard, I know I'm doing it correctly. To snap it, hold it down with something. In this case, I'm using myself. I use the first piece as a template for the second piece so that the sides match. Just repeat the same process. Breaks fairly easy. There is something oddly satisfying about snapping plexiglass. It's kind of like popping bubble wrap. Next are the ventilation holes. It's very important to put ventilation holes in your enclosure to avoid growing fungus. I do use a dry erase marker. Notice the devil horn hold down. I drew a pilot hose along the bottom and back edges for the net. Uh, for a place to put the nails. I don't like to use a spiral bit, I use a drill, a glass drill bit instead. It doesn't crack or grab a hold of the acrylic like a more traditional drill bit would. A little adhesive, spread it around. My uh, sausages can't hold those tiny nails, so I use needle nose pliers. And we're about halfway finished. Next is the front piece. I measure at the bottom to get a more accurate cut. For some reason I decided to use the table saw to cut the last piece. Safety goggles, check. Flip flops, check. Missing table saw guard, check. Don't follow my example. I don't put ventilation hose in the front just so I have a better view of the inside of the enclosure. I should decorate cakes for a living. Look at that. <laughs> Same process with the nails. Or be a drummer. Next, I use uh, ordinary super glue to adhere the acrylic corners together.
It works very quickly. There is not a whole lot of time for error though. The last piece to make is the lid. It is also the most tedious. So far this is the best method I've found. I know from experience that a flat single piece does not, war uh, does not work because the corners will warp and curl up. Kind of defeats the whole purpose of a lid. There is the six-sided box. To add a 3D effect to it, I create the backdrop out of star foam. And the technique here is to not overthink it too much. Just pick, scrape, and do a little sanding, and it usually turns out fairly well. That is the same adhesive I've been using the entire time. It's pretty tacky, so it holds the styrofoam in place. And for the extra pieces I lay on top, I just pin them down with brad nails. I use uh, non-sanded grout mixed with uh, plain water. It's, it's diluted down quite a bit. Here I only use one coat. I do prefer to apply three coats. It creates a much durable finish and I better looking backdrop. Next I add some latex paint as highlights. I learned this technique from Bob Ross, Happy Little Accidents. The super glue does leave a haze on the acrylic. I just lightly scrape it and wipe it down with a dry paper towel. Comes off fairly easy. The substrate I do prefer to use is, is the cocoa core. It holds humidity and doesn't mold. I give all of my tarantulas an appropriately sized water dish. And I also place a piece of uh, cork bark in there, whether it's a burrowing or arboreal. And the final touch is an, is an improved These flowers work. floral piece. That's it.